Standing outside the COVID inquiry today, hoping to get some answers, finally, at long last, were some of the families left bereaved by the pandemic. They held up pictures of their loved ones who sadly died from COVID as Dominic Cummings, a senior government official who breached lockdown rules himself, arrived. Joining me now is Dr. Saleh Hassan, whose father very sadly died from COVID in 2021. Doctor, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Obviously, my condolences at your loss. I'm sure I've said that to you before because we've discussed this on many occasions. But as other people listen to the inquiry and, and what's being said particularly today about your disastrous, chaotic governance and a lack of plan, a lack of strategy, a lack of organisation, lack of will to listen. And this particular phrase that uh, Boris Johnson was pretty relaxed about the elderly and vulnerable dying because they were going to die anyway. Hey, so it's a bit sooner, so what kind of a thing? I, I can barely imagine how it must feel for you listening to that. You know, what it does, Vanessa, is it kind of makes sense because whilst we were working, um, I worked in both A&E and I worked in ITU, and some of the instructions that were being given to us were so against the grain of what we would have liked to have done um, as doctors. Um, and many of us sort of ignored the instructions that were coming for, from above, for example, not to test uh, people before they got sent back to their care homes. On what planet was that deemed safe? But it was so heavily policed and monitored. Uh, I, I didn't adhere to that, and I know many others didn't, but I witnessed colleagues trying to explain the rationale to that to really, really concerned nursing home managers um, who were pleading and begging for the residents, their residents to be tested before they were brought back to the care home. Reading the WhatsApp messages, uh, honestly, I, I've just been glued to them today. They, they, uh, all the revelations are coming thick and fast. I mean, they're disgusting, but they also point to the culture, the mindset um, th that was going on in, in Cabinet. You know, uh, in one of the WhatsApp messages, one of the lines, it, it Boris Johnson identifies that there are 3 million people who are over the age of 80. And then reading further down, he says, right, well, we don't really need to bother with a nationwide lockdown. 3 million people is the population of Wales there and about. Was he suggesting that 3 million are losable? That, you know, we can go from our 67 million population of the UK down to 64. Is that what he was saying? It's disgusting. And, and tell me a little bit about it, because people at the time, I think, were so caught up in just trying to come to terms and some kind of understanding about what was happening to us. You know, suddenly in lockdown, suddenly unable to self-soothe because we couldn't be, tell ourselves, oh, don't worry, you'll be fine. It's all going to be all right because we didn't know if it was going to be all right. We didn't know who was going to get it. We didn't know who was going to die. I think some people have forgotten how utterly terrifying and bewildering it was at the very beginning when there were no answers, only questions, and nobody seemed to have any real answers to it. Anything. But take us back you know, to what you've just said, Doctor, yeah. the bit where they're saying you can release patients back to care homes, residential homes for the elderly, but don't bother testing them for COVID before they go. And you said that, you know, some people were struggling with the rationale. Well, what was the rationale? What was the explanation given for that at the time? None. I asked managers within our hospital about that and I think even the words coming out of their mouths didn't even make sense to them mm. and it was, for me it just felt clear that someone's leaning on them to make sure that you know they pass this message on but it made no sense it it, it, it was confusing um it, and and dangerous really it, it was going against everything that we were being told on the one hand about testing but therefore but we mustn't do it for this group, for this really, really vulnerable group of people, the elderly and the vulnerable with other illnesses. We mustn't do it for that group. It made no sense. But these revelations that are coming out and are, I think, you know, what's the point of the inquiry? Well, thank God we're, we've got it because we're hearing about this. Um, I think it kind of now indicates what the culture and mindset was towards our most vulnerable within society. What does that say about us, you know, as a country, if that's how, you know, we were 
caring for our most vulnerable, for the elderly, doesn't say much about us as a society or the government. Only, like to say. only we were, but were we? Because, because individuals, families, I mean, I all the way through that, I was broadcasting every single day on the BBC, five and a half hours of live radio a day. And I was absolutely inundated with calls from family members saying, oh, my God, I'm not supposed to go and see my elderly mother. Oh, my God, I can't go and see my father in the care home. What am I going to do? I'm going to stand in the front garden and scream up to the window. But actually, he's bedridden. I don't know if they can get him to the window. And if, if they do, I don't know if he'll be able to recognise me or he has dementia. He doesn't understand why I'm not there. I want to be there. I'm devastated. I mean, you get calls from people saying, oh, quite frankly, my father was over 80, so I don't really care. That wasn't it. Of course, that wasn't it. That no. wasn't that wasn't reflecting the views of, of the public, and it certainly wasn't reflecting the views of people about themselves. I can't imagine anybody really saying, oh, so, hey, I get COVID and I die, so I die. That wasn't it. People were terrified no. and people were desperate to cleave under their families and love them and oh, look after 100%. them, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean... Uh, it it wasn't just the fact that people were going to catch COVID and die. It was the way that they were dying. Yes. And I don't want to be too graphic. for no, but do be. Viewers, it's just so people remember was, what it was like. It was horrendous. People, And I, I witnessed this with my patients. I witnessed this with my own father. It was a brutal way of, of spending your last few days alive and conscious, you know, struggling to breathe. I haven't forgotten that that period of time, right from January to February, when we were having the news coming out from China, mm. from, a, you know, that almost COVID tsunami that was going across Europe. It, it wasn't as if it just suddenly arrived on our doorstep out of the blue. We had all that time and data and information that was coming out of other countries. And we are an island nation. We could have done better. We weren't on mainland Europe where borders, you know, uh, 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 physical right next to each other. We had the benefit of being of distance. And yet we had some of the highest ranking numbers, death rates at various points of the COVID pandemic. And absolutely locking down late, did the ring. It ended up with people being isolated from loved ones in care home, unable to go and visit their care, uh, loved ones in care homes, or even in hospital on the last few days of yes. their life. It was a brutal time. I remember it all really, really well. I think maybe people, and I'm, gl I'm glad that they're doing it, have some self-protecting mechanism in place where, you know, memory is erasing some of the experiences but it's really really alive and vivid in my brain still because I am terrified about this happening again. I thank you very much indeed I once again give you my condolences on the loss of your dear father and thank you so much for talking to us about it.